Alright class, so today we're going to do 2.9, only the set, and go. Uh, just a word of warning, if I were you, and if you haven't done so already, uh, please, take a, uh, please pause the video and take a, another sheet of paper out, because you're going to need the space to do both the set and go. I myself, I even made a little sheet and I copied them over, the ones that I'm going to do for today. So if I were you guys, get another sheet of paper, pause the video, get another sheet of paper, and then get ready. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm also going to warn you guys ahead of time, my dogs just started playing and I don't know if they're going to continue or not. So I might get, you might hear the little clickety clacks of their paws and stuff. So let's get started. So for the set, we're going to do number 11. So that equation right there. Notice that we're given the factored form, just kind of like how we did on the task. And we need to find all the information. Same thing, just like how we did in the task, only difference is we don't have a graph this time. So it's a little harder, but not too bad. So if you don't remember, this is in factored form. So that means that immediately we can find the x-intercepts. So if we find the x-intercepts, you have to set both factors equal to zero. This is one of the factors, here's the other one. Set them both equal to zero. Why we set them equal to zero is because for that same reason. This is our y. And when you say, when you have a point, you always have zero at the end um, for x-intercepts. So you're telling me y is zero. It's called the, the zero property rule or something like that. I can't remember. <coughs> and sorry, the dog's barking. I think they saw something. So for the first one, <coughs> You're going to add 2 to both sides because you want to get x by itself. So x is going to equal 2. When you have nothing and you add 2, you have 2. Um, same idea with this one, but this time you subtract. Cancel out, and you're left with negative 6. So this tells me this is 2, zero, two comma 0, this is negative 6, comma 0. It de order doesn't matter, you could write it the other way. It really doesn't matter. Um, now that I'm here, I'm going to work on, or I'm also going to do the y-intercept. The y-intercept, you need to plug in 0 because, again, you have 0 for your x value. So that means you have to plug 0 in. So that means here's your equation. 4x minus 2, x plus 6. That's your equation. Now, wherever there's 0, or wherever there's 0, wherever there's an x, plug in 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. You drop down the 4, and this is 6. Multiply that all together, and you get, i um, doing this in my head, negative 8. That is 42? No. 48, sorry. Negative 48. This is a negative 48. Kind of a big number. Stretch is super easy when you have a factor form. It's always a number that's in the very front. So that's going to go here. And then vertex form, this one's a little tough because we don't have the, um, a graph. But if I were you, just start with the smallest x-intercept and then keep, you could do a little number line and then keep going all the way to 2. So negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if I were just cross off um, numbers, cross off those two, these two, cross off these two, these two, keep going until you get the middle. My middle here is negative 2. So I know that my x value is negative 2. If you're wondering why we know it's going to be the x, because remember, that's technically your axis of symmetry. And your axis of symmetry is always the x value of your vertex. So we know that's the case. So then this is the part that you kind of have to do work. Now you're going to plug in 2 to this equation. That little 4x um, plus, or the 4x minus 2 and all that. The 4x minus 2, the 4 times whatever that is. Sorry. 4 quantity of x minus 2 times x plus 6. Sorry. 
Shouldn't have been lazy like that. All right. Replace x with uh, negative 2. You have negative 4 here. Remember to use PEMDAS. That's what I'm using right now. And this is going to be 4. Those are a lot of 4s. You get 16. 16 times 4 is 64. But, but there's a negative. So that's um, so negative 64. So this is negative 2, negative 64. And that's that. Um, I would wasn't going to, I will do it, I'll do it. It's same process. All it is is there's a factor there, and I know some of you guys, free, or factor, there's a fraction there, but, and I know it freaks some of you guys out, but I'm going to show you how it's literally the same process. All it is is you have a fraction. So this is also in factored form. So because of this, you know that your x-intercepts are immediately shown. So this is going to be x minus 8 is equal to 0, x plus 4 equals 0. Again, if you know the pattern where it's just switching the numbers, you can do that as well. Add 8. This is x equals 8. This is x equals negative 4. So you have 8, 0, and negative 4, 0. Y-intercept, you plug in 0. So you have negative 1 half times 0 minus 8 times 0 plus 4. Remember, use PEMDAS here. So you work on the parentheses. So this is negative 8. This is 4. This is negative 1 half. Negative 8 and 4. That is negative 32. Half of 32 is 16. Oh, this is negative, so that's positive 16. So your y-intercept is 0, 16. Pretty easy stuff. Um, your stretch is obviously this number up here. So again, that's going to be negative 1 half. I don't like how that negative is not showing, so I'll write it again. And then your vertex. Again, if I were you, start off with negative 4, and then just keep going. Negative 3. Oh, this one's going to be long. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then just cross them off until you get to the middle. Cross off those two and these two, these three and these three. And then, oh, I think I crossed off one too many. One, two, three. And then I cross off these two. I've got two. So I know that this is two. And I plug that number in. Notice how there's a lot of work. Told you guys you should write it in a different sheet of paper. So this is two minus eight times two plus four. Negative six. Negative one half. 2 plus 4 is 6. Now, 6 times 6 is 36, but because there's a negative, it's negative 36. So half of 36 is 3, 50, 18. And positive 18 because of those two negatives. So there's 2, 18. So pause the video if you need to. Uh, write down any questions that you may have. And... We'll move on. So now we're going to do number 20, which um, I believe we did already. But I'm going to show you guys again because it might have been a little too, you might have feel like, oh, that was too rushed or whatever. You were just like, I need to see it again. So let's work this out. Difference between this one is that this one's actually in vertex form. So just like how you guys have told me in the past, because it's in vertex form, I immediately see several things just by looking at this. These two here get me my vertex, these two values here. If you don't remember, this is going to be negative 2. This is going to be negative 4. This value here stays the same 
Well, this value here, oh, I should do a different color. This value here changes sign. Remember that difference. The other thing that you can see right away just by looking at it is that your stretch is always in the front. Notice how there's no number here. So you get to assume that that stretch is one. Now, x-intercepts, or let's do the y-intercept, just because it's easier. y-intercept, you just plug in zero. So here's your equation. Minus four. If I plug in zero, I got zero plus two. Minus four. This is two squared. Minus four. This is four minus four, which gives me zero. So this here is zero comma zero. Now there's a couple, a lot of things going on here. First of all, if you're wondering, how did you know how to do all that? Well, because of PEMDAS again, you guys. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So remember that. That's how you that's how I knew how to solve all this. I did the parentheses first, or parentheses first, then I worried about exponents, and then I subtracted. So that's one thing I um, wanted to point out. The other thing is Notice how I just have zero, zero here. Remember you guys, that's your origin. That's this little point right there. So that means that you're, this point here, this intercept, not only is that Y intercept, but it still happens to be crossing the X axis too. So this is also your X intercept. This does not always happen. This only happens if you, one of them has an, the origin as its intercept. But if it's any, if there's anything else, then you, it's not gonna happen. But in this case, yes, you have a y-intercept for your, with zero, zero for your y-intercept, so that means zero, zero is also your x-intercept, one of them, at least. Now for your x-intercept. This is the one that's a little harder. It is the one that, if you don't remember, this is what, we, this is what I told you guys where I, we did reverse PEMDAS. I only told a couple periods of this because it, I had the mini epiphany um, later in the day. But this is reverse PEMDAS, and you guys are going to see why in a little bit. So reverse PEMDAS, you set up your equation. x plus 2 squared minus 4 and set it equal to 0. So if I add 4, now, well, before I start talking, so by reverse PEMDAS, all I'm saying is that you're going to follow PEMDAS, but you're going to start from the back and move to the front. So you're going to start with subtracting and adding now first. And then you keep going all the way till you go to the beginning. So I'm going to look to see where am I adding or subtracting. I notice here, but look how I have a square there. So I can't use that one. But I notice I have one here. So that means I have to add 4 to both sides. Then I have x plus 2 squared. I like how this square looks like. There we go. And this is 4. So now I look to see if I can multiply or divide. Normally you look for multiplying and dividing up here. And again, I don't see anything. So that means, or I don't see a, a notable number. So that means I can skip M and D. But I see that I have an exponent. And the inverse of an exponent is square roots. So I have to take the square root of both sides. And that means I have x plus 2 is equal to the square root of 4. This is the one where you have to be careful. Square root of 2 gives you two solutions, a positive 2 and a negative 2. Be careful of that. Square root of 4 is 2 and negative 2. So I have two solutions. So because of that, I have to write it two different ways. x plus 2 is equal to positive 2. And x plus 2 is equal to negative 2. From here, it's just a matter of solving for x. These are two different equations, and you just solve for x. Subtract the 2, that gets me 0. Subtract the 2, that gets me negative 4. Why can't I? Oh, there we go. Negative 4. So, and those are my two points. Look, I have 0, 0 here, so that confirms what I said on this one. And this one here is going to be negative 4. That's pretty much it, kind of like what we were talking about today. If you have any questions, um, you know, write them down and try out the other ones. Be aware of the ones that have a, a number in front. 
That's where you have to think about the M and D of PEMDAS. So let me write all of it. So that's where M and D are going to pop up. This is multiplication when it's a number next to each other like that. So to get rid of multiplication, you have to divide. So divide both sides. All right. Now number 26. I wasn't going to do it, but looking at the time, it's going to be a longer video, but I think you guys are going to benefit from this. So all I want you to point out is you get the same answers when you for 12, 11, 12, and 13. Those are the same answers with 23, 24, 25. So if you haven't done that, uh, be aware of that. If you found the answers 11, 12, or 13, make sure you, um, you verify with 23, 24, 25. Do not just copy, you guys. Make sure you do the work. I want to see the work. So they're asking you if, um, are they the same equation? Or prove that they're the same equation. And think about it. I told you guys already that quadratic, quadratics have three forms. Vertex. Why can't I write that? Vertex, uh, standard, and factored. These here are in factored form and vertex form. What I want you to do is convert both of them into standard form. You're going to see it's the same exact equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom up really closely. And I'm going to show you guys how this is factored form. So you can break this into pieces if you would like to for factored form or kind of use that little, the little double chin method I showed you guys. Use that and you can actually have that be your um, factor, your standard form. Actually, this one's a little tricky. Kind of, sort of. So I'm going to have four on the outside. Oh, let me write this smaller. So just ignore the four for a second. And you need the little double chin method that we normally do to check. So negative 2 to x or times x is negative 2x. x times 6 is plus 6x. Combine those, you get mm, 4x. So that's going to be my b. Multiply these two terms, negative 2 and 6. That's going to get me negative 12. That's going to be my c term. And then x times x is x squared. So there's my standard form, but with 4. Now multiply that 4 into all the terms. And you're going to be left with uh, 4x squared plus 4x. No, not 4x. I don't know where I got the 4x. Uh, 4 times 4 is 16x. Minus, uh, that's 48. So right now, this is telling me that in standard form, that's going to be my equation. I have to see if this is going to, this here is going to get come from this over here. So we're going to check it out right now. So vertex form, it's a little tricky. This one, you're going to have to do some scratch work. So here's my little scratch work. So what you do first is you focus on this here. And you multiply that to first. So x plus 2 squared is the same as x plus 2 times x plus 2. Do the same thing. Multiply there. Multiply there. That's 2x. 2x. I got 4x. 2 times 2 is 4. Whoa. And then I have plus x squared. So this is x squared plus 4 x plus 4. So then this here is going to, I'm going to take this over here. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 64. I'm going to multiply this 4 in. This is 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. If I subtract 4, I'm going to end up getting um, 48. So I have 4x squared plus 16x minus 48. And if I look here, oh look, that's what I have of, over here. So I verify, so this is true. So again, so that means that both of these equations are the same, but they're just in different forms. Think about it just like how I tell you guys. 
it's the same person but in three different outfits. So these are all the same equation. They all mean the same thing. All right, write down any questions. Try B and C. They're really, they're really easy. It's just a little bit of work, but I'm sure you guys can do it. So I will see you guys tomorrow.